I'd like for you guys to, to do something for me today. Um, I'm very comfortable in front of my classes. So if y'all all would, I would like for you to think of yourselves as my students today, okay? I think that'll make it easier for me. Um, what I'm going to do today is make a case myself and my, with my students on how environmental education can change the world by changing lives. And to start with, I'd also like for you to, to do something else for me. I'd like for you to think about a special place in nature, the natural world, that you have been to or would like to go to. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Rachel Carson was a scientist and author, and many people believe she was um, responsible for starting the modern environmental movement. But Rachel Carson once wrote, the more clearly we focus our attention on the wonders and reality of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for its destruction. Well, exactly what did she mean by this? Well, I'd like to use an example of wetlands. At one time in this country, wetlands were considered mosquito-infested, disease-breeding wastelands that were only good if we filled them in. But when we did that, we found out just how wrong we were. Wetlands provide many ecosystem services for free. They filter pollutants from rainwaters. They mitigate flood and storm surge damage. They help, help recharge aquifers that one-third of all Americans rely on for their water. They provide habitat for some unique plant and animal species. They're very productive ecosystems, some of the most productive ecosystems in the world, and therefore they sequester a lot of carbon. And if you like cranberries, cranberries are grown in wetlands. Once we learn just how in, uh, many ecosystem services that wetlands provide, we started uh, protecting and restoring them. And we did that because we had educated ourselves on the vital roles that wetlands play in the ecosystems in which they create and on which we depend. South Carolina has about 4.6 million acres of wetlands. That's almost 25% of the land area in our state. Only Louisiana and Florida have a higher percentage of wetlands than does South Carolina. My... <coughs> um, my life as an educator, as an environmental educator, was anything but direct. Uh, but I'm sure it started somewhere outdoors. Uh, I grew up in Spartanburg, and as a kid, I was outside all the time. Uh, playing sports, fishing with my dad, uh, camping with my family. I would go to Fair Forest Creek, where I would uh, pick up rocks and look for crayfish. I would ride my bike to the North Tiger River uh, where friends and I would slide down the rocks, swim in the river. We would fish for whatever was biting. Uh, we even built rafts that we used to float down on the river. Being outdoors and savoring the, uh, the wonders that outdoors had to offer made it personal for me because I was having fun, okay? I later learned the environmental reasons for why, uh, for those things that I savored outdoors. And that made me want to protect them. Um, I graduated from Clemson in 1984 with a degree in administrative management. I worked for a year and then decided that I would go back to school to become a science high school science teacher. With only one course of science in my undergraduate degree, 
my advisor at Converse <laughs> was concerned, and rightfully so, about my lack of science education. But I did get that degree in secondary science education and started teaching chemistry. The one course I did have at Clemson, started teaching chemistry at Broome High School in 1988. Nine years later, I went to Spartanburg High School to once again teach chemistry. But something happened at the end of that first year that would change my trajectory as a science teacher. The principal came to me and asked me if I would like to teach a new science course at the high school, Advanced Placement Environmental Science. Without hesitation, I said yes. And so it began. I had just signed on to teach a college-level course in environmental science, and I really had no formal environmental education. Only the experiences that I had growing up. Well, um, my formal science uh, environmental science education was about to begin. So that summer, before I started teaching apes, I went to a two-week institute to learn more about, uh, for new uh, APES, uh, AP environmental science teachers. And I learned enough and I studied enough to stay a day or two ahead of my students. But quite often, we were learning together. And as much as I could, we were outside. So I was very comfortable and I was enjoying what I was, I was doing. I was back in the creeks and I was having fun. Um, at the early in the spring semester of that first year teaching AP Environmental Science, a pamphlet was placed in my box about Envirothon. Envirothon is an environmental educational program and competition based on the use and management of natural resources. Teams of five students take tests together in forestry, soils, aquatics, and wildlife and a current topic that this year is adapting to climate change. I didn't realize just how significant that pamphlet would be in furthering my ability to understand and teach environmental science and how it would change the lives of my students. Um, through APES and Envirothon, these are some of my students uh, from 2017. We had two teams at the state competition. And this is last year's team, 2022, who won the state and went on to compete in the NCF Envirothon. When I got that pamphlet, thinking back to that first year, I took it to the two apes sections I had, and I asked them if anyone was interested. I told them that if you win the state, you get to go to California to compete in the NCF Envirothon. After school that day, I had five students show up to that meeting, but that was all we needed. They worked hard. We actually won the state competition that very first year. We went to Arcata, California and competed at the NCF Envirothon there, t finishing 21st out of about 55 teams. I continued to teach apes. I continued to this day to uh, be the advisor for the Envirothon teams. And uh, through Envirothon and teaching uh, environmental science, my students and I have learned a lot of things. Being able to identify what you see here are soil horizons in a mature soil. Uh, being able to uh, determine the texture of the soil with a ribbon test. We've learned how to identify damselfly nymphs and other macroinvertebrates. Learn that carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide are all greenhouse gases that humans impact significantly. Learn that we, if we recycle aluminum cans, as an example, we can save as much as 90 to 95 percent of the energy it would take to make them from raw materials, and that would include also reducing CO2 emissions significantly. Also, bauxite is a mineral ore that is used to produce aluminum, that it takes four to five tons of bauxite to produce one ton of aluminum, okay? So another um, reason 
why we should recycle. We learned that a gallon of gas weighs about six pounds, but if we burn a gallon of gasoline, we emit 20 pounds of carbon dioxide. Now, if you think about all the gasoline-powered cars and trucks and vehicles that we have in this country, in a single year, that could add up to a lot. Well, taking the 2021 data, and my students could do this, they, we calcula calculated that in 2021, uh, it, just in the United States alone, uh, that amounts to about 2.2 trillion pounds of CO2. That's a huge, a huge number, okay? Well, it, we're all responsible for that. But we're also all responsible for trying to reduce it. Because of vapes and Envirothon, my students have had a lot of outdoor uh, experiences, such as marking invasive Bradford pear trees for removal, building bluebird houses for the backyard, planting trees on the new Spartanburg High School campus, learning how to measure the height and diameter of trees using a Biltmore stick, and then in some cases returning and teaching new Envirothon students, environmental students, to do the same thing. My students have been in creeks, streams, and ponds looking for macroinvertebrates and then sorting them and identifying based on their sensitivity to water pollution. I want to go back to the damselfly for just a second. The damselfly lives up to three years in the water as a nymph, okay? It eats mosquito larvae. As an adult, it only lives for less than two weeks. As an adult, it also eats mosquitoes. What a great ecosystem service, right? Well, what happens to damselfly populations if we negatively impact water quality? Envirothon also provides opportunities for students to develop their oral, their uh, public speaking skills. They present to panels of judges based on a scenario that they're given on the current topic. They also are rewarded with scholarship opportunities and also opportunities to visit places such as Yellowstone, Sequoia, um, Grand Tetons, uh, the Grand Canyon National Parks. They have been off the coast of Maine well watching. Uh, they've ridden the Maid of the Mist at Niagara Falls. They have also crouched next to loggerhead sea turtles at 1.30 in the morning and watched them lay eggs in a nest. What an incredible, I was there. It's just an incredible experience for everybody who was there. You know, can you imagine what they took away from that? Do you think that having that experience made them want to protect the beaches where these incredible uh, creatures lay their nest? I think so. Well, I've talked a lot about what opportunities my students have had and some experiences. We're going to hear from what they have to say about what this has all meant to them. Envirothon not only drove me to pursue a career in which I would deal with nature, it made me appreciate the world around me. It changed my perspective of the world. Whether it was camping every summer, working in the yard, or having my first pet be a caterpillar, my love for the outdoors helped fuel my passion for wanting to preserve and protect the environment. I took apes when I was a junior in high school, and it was the first time in my entire academic career when I actually got to do something I was interested in. And now I'm majoring in horticulture. I'm already seeing various skills we learned in Virothon, such as macroinvertebrate sampling and the research opportunities available to students. 
Being a part of Envirothon throughout high school allowed me to develop an understanding of the complexity of the world around us and gave me a strong appreciation for the vulnerability and the power of the ecosystems we exist in. Right now in my ecological engineering class, I'm learning about how biodiversity, species richness, and succession can be used to rehabilitate or create wetlands. Uh, I'm not going to point her out, but Sarah's here today. And uh, she is very um, excited about her major. Very passionate. Envirothon has certainly affected the way that I live my life, and I do find myself making environmentally conscious decisions as an adult. It is safe to say my collegiate experience and career trajectory are all tied back to AP Environmental Science and Envirothon to some extent. This is the last one of these, but I wanted to make another note about Sarah. Sarah also last year uh, volunteered to be an oral presentation judge at her local Envirothon competition in Westchester, New York. I think these students have, have made the case um, how important environmental education has been in their lives. From their major field of study in college to their career paths and even how they live their lives in a more environmentally sensitive way. But you know, all of you guys don't have to major in an environmentally related field to understand how important and how significant those connections we have with nature are. Um, I asked you earlier to think about a place, a special place, or places that you have been in the natural world or would like to go. E.B. White once said in an interview, Every morning I awake torn between the desire to save the world and an inclination to savor it. This makes it hard to plan the day. But if we forget to savor the world, what possible reason do we have for saving it? In a way, the savoring must come first. These are pictures I took a couple of places that are about 15 minutes from my house and places that I do go and hang out and savor. But I also understand their ecological significance, just like uh, the wetlands we talked about at the beginning today. Once we learn how important they were, then we have spent a lot of time restoring and protecting them. Um, if you think about those places, your special places, the more we know our connections and the more you understand your connections to those places and other places around the world, the more inclined I think we all will be to protect and preserve them. Thank you.